guys welcome to pantry living our new channel here on youtube and uh, today we are going to be using store-bought milk to make yogurt the one thing that i'm impressed with with this homemade yogurt is i use two liters of this milk so basically a six and a half dollar value canadian and we ended up getting nine jars, which works out to about three containers of yogurt from our grocery store. Now that means basically our $6.50 made us almost an $11 value of yogurt. So yogurt is something that we use a lot here on the homestead, whether it's in smoothies or as desserts or breakfast with a little bit of granola, it is definitely a popular item here. It is something that we are eventually striving to uh, grow ourselves here on the homestead with our sheep, but that is a video for a different channel. But today we're going to be honing my skills and uh, making our yogurt with store-bought milk. I prefer to use a whole milk. It is actually 3.8% and grown right here in Ontario and that is awesome. Granted, not the cheapest option at the grocery store, but it does make beautiful yogurt. Now you can make this with 2% or 2% and add a little bit of cream to it if you wanna sweeten the pot a little bit, but we find this works amazing for us and it really, really is quite tasty. Now the nice thing about yogurt is it's super, super simple. Basically you're going to need two ingredients and a few items. First and most important, your milk. Today I'm going to be using two liters of 3.8% whole milk from the grocery store. Uh, you will also need a cultured natural yogurt that uh, has live bacteria culture that you can use as your starter. You can also get uh, little packet cultures, which I actually do have some in the freezer from when I started it originally back, way back. And uh, that works too if you happen to have access to that, but this is just as easy and makes fantastic yogurt. As far as tools, you're going to need a pot, thermometer, and jars or some sort of vessel to put this in. And then I'm going to show you my little tip to be able to make this yogurt without a yogurt maker. So first thing we're going to do is get the milk in the pot and start that heating process. I've already measured out my uh, two liters here. Hopefully we can spill it without making a mess. Turning our oven to a medium, not high heat, but a medium heat, we want to bring this to 180 degrees on our thermometer. So while your milk is heating up, you really want to get your jars cleaned up and ready to go. I would suggest putting them in the oven to sterilize them. It just is one of those things, makes your yogurt last longer and all that other wonderful stuff. Uh, it also is great because when you're putting your milk into the jars, it is great to have those jars warm so that you don't cool off the milk because once we reach that 180 degrees, we're then going to cool it down to the 115 that we want to actually incubate this yogurt at. So you can see we're starting to steam and getting close to the uh, 150 degree mark. At this point, you really want to be keeping kind of whisking so that this does not scald. Now, the one thing that I will say as I keep stirring here is I take it to the 180 for pasteurization. Now, you could make your yogurt just bringing it to the required 115 and then starting your um, incubation there. Uh, it really is your personal choice. I find that uh, doing it this way, I get a thicker yogurt as well, because I think you get a lot more evaporation. The longer you keep your milk at that heat, the thicker the results will be in your yogurt. So you can go from a drinkable yogurt to a really thick, more of a Greek style kind of yogurt. But uh, anyways, we're gonna keep going here. We are almost 175. All right, we are just about to hit 180 and basically at that point I'm going to take this off the heat and try and cool it down as quickly as possible. It doesn't have to be done quickly, but I prefer to do that so that I can just get it into incubation and get to bed because I usually do this overnight. Perfect temperature, let's get it off. We've reached 180, we've now put it in the fridge, we want to see the temperature of that yogurt 
or well, it's milk still at this point, but we, we want to see that temperature drop back down to the 115 before we add the yogurt to start our uh, culture process. Now, at that point, when we add the yogurt in, you could also add things like honey or maple syrup, uh, vanilla, things like that, that you want your flavorings and such to go into this. Now this time, I'm actually just gonna add a couple tablespoons of honey to the mixture and that's it. Uh, we do like to usually keep it plain because sometimes we use it for curries or things like that. Uh, and when we use it in smoothies or eat it as it is, we can always add jams or syrups to it at that point. But we're going to wait. It'll probably take 45 minutes, I'm guessing. I'll start the timer and see uh, so that I can let you know the rough estimated time in the fridge. And then uh, I'll bring you back when we add all the other goodies. One other thing that I forgot to mention was about the yogurt. While your milk is cooling in the fridge, you want to take your yogurt out because it is best for it to be risen to a similar, obviously it's not going to be 115, but room temperature, then it doesn't bring the temperature of your milk down too far when you put it in. So what we're using here, I prefer to use a quarter cup per liter or quart. Uh, that is a higher amount than what is often used, but that's just what I like. And once I start this yogurt and start making it myself, all I do is keep one of my little uh, one cupper jars, 250 mils. And basically I make four liters at a time and just put one of those in it. So that's going to be the plan from this point on. Well, I just checked on the yogurt in the fridge. It's been almost 25 minutes and we were down to 125. So that means we've got 10 more degrees to drop. So at this point, I'm going to start prepping my oven. Now, you can buy a yogurt making machine. It's basically like a dehydrator um, that your jars can sit in. But what I find is that limits me to how many uh, jars I can actually make where if I use my oven, I can do as many jars as I can fit in there. And how do I use my oven? Well, I take my dehydrator and set it at 115 and turn it on in the bottom of my oven. Now my oven does have a dehydrate button, but unfortunately my oven shuts off after three hours. So when I'm going to sleep, it doesn't quite work. But this method works amazing and allows me to do up to four liters at a time, which is fantastic. And basically it's as simple as that. We're gonna let the oven warm up to the 115. I'm going to now get the uh, milk out of the fridge and we're going to add in our yogurt and honey and mix it up and get it into jars. So we're now going to take our half a cup of yogurt. We're gonna put that into a separate container that's big enough to hold a little bit of this milk. And basically, Take a little scoop of the milk out and add it in. This just allows you to mix up that yogurt and break it all up and get it kind of smooth to um, mix into your initial milk there a lot simpler. And there we go. It looks nice and smooth. And now we just add it to our big pots that and then we just gently stir this we don't want to whisk it at this point because as you can see it's already pretty frothy and foamy and we don't want to make that worse and now at this point i'm going to add my honey from a local producer for us we love their honey and i'm going to just put three tablespoons in there's one Two, maybe I only need two actually. That looked like quite a bit, didn't it? I think we're just gonna go with the two. Honey's a valuable commodity. You could do this same process with maple syrup if you prefer that. So it's quite runny right now, but as this incubates and then sets again in the fridge tomorrow, it will, it doesn't harden, but it thickens into a really, really nice consistency. So we ended up with nine jars, which is what I anticipated between the uh, two liters of milk and adding a half a cup of uh, the yogurt. These lids 
are just very, very loosely on here. I've got them slightly twisted, but you want them to still, it's covering it, but still able to breathe basically. And now with our oven up to temperature with the dehydrator running in there, we're gonna put these jars in and we're going to let them go for eight hours. So basically it's almost 11 o'clock now, seven o'clock tomorrow morning, we're going to check them. They may need a few hours more. It's hard to tell until we actually get them out. All right, well, we are the next morning. It's actually been about nine and a half hours or so. I had a little bit of a sleep in, but that's okay. So we're gonna check this yogurt and I am pretty sure it's gonna be ready to come out of here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, turn off our dehydrator and get these out. All right, so join me here as we take first peek. Oh, that's looking pretty good. We're going to get a spoon in here. Oh, oh, look at that. I will admit, I'm not a huge fan of warm yogurt. So I don't know if I'm going to love it warm, but we're going to taste test it anyway. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. Remember, we put a little bit of honey in there. Oh, that's good. That's very good. I probably shouldn't have put my spoon back. I guess I'm just going to have to eat it all. That's good. Uh, maybe a little bit more honey next time. I probably would go with three tablespoons, which is what I originally thought, but then I held back and only did the two. And it's also warm, which I don't love it warm. So I'm going to put this in the fridge and we're going to use it for probably a smoothie or something later on today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and share the channel out there as where baby channel just getting growing. And hopefully you'll stay tuned for the next episode where who knows what we're going to get up to. So as you see, we got the nine jars, which works out to about three containers of yogurt from our grocery store. Now those containers of yogurt on average are about 388. You might kind of find them at 350. If you're really lucky on sale, you might find them for 288, but that's becoming a real rarity these days. And that means basically our $6.50 made us almost an $11 value of yogurt. Now I know there's factors in there, like they're not flavored, things like that. So you got all that to add. But the one thing I'm really impressed with with this is that I got a decent amount of yogurt that is amazing quality in comparison with some of the stuff that I could buy on the cheap in the grocery store. And I think that's the take home message really is even if I'm buying my milk, I can still create the product as healthily and as cheaply as I could have if I had it at home. That's my theory because by the time I feed the sheep, it's probably going to cost me that much money anyways to grow the milk. But this is a great way to learn a skill even if you don't have a cow or a sheep or some sort of dairy animal at home. But let's just give this a test now that it's been in the fridge for 24 hours. So as you saw, we put those two tablespoons of honey in our mixture when we were uh, making that yogurt. And I will say I would put more honey in if you were going to eat it that way. But as you can see here, we've got our raspberry syrup homemade. There will be a link for that video eventually once we get it onto this channel. But homemade raspberry syrup, we're just going to mix that in a little bit and give it a try. I really cannot get over the thickness that this yogurt went. I didn't even realize that I could buy 3.8% whole milk at the grocery store. This is going to change the game because I really want to try getting into the making cheese and stuff as well. But let's try it. Oh my goodness. Okay. This yogurt's not going to last very long. <laughs> this is awesome. Oh, I'm so excited. Anyways, stay tuned as we keep going through some learning lessons with store-bought milk products.